In this video, I'm going to talk about rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis, also abbreviated RPGN. And before we get into the big long talk about this, I think it's important to uh, draw a diagram uh, of the nephron, which uh, most of you know is the unit component of the kidney. So here's a basic diagram of a nephron. And here is the glomerulus. Now, when you have uh, diseases of the uh, glomerulus, uh, glomerular diseases, what's happening is you have uh, a, a problem at this level. And what that does is normally when blood comes, it's filtered uh, and eventually the waste products are uh, excreted in the urine. Now large molecules are not supposed to come out into the urine. They're not, large molecules don't pass through, through the glomerulus. So if they do, that means there's some sort of problem, some sort of pathology in the, in the glomerulus. And which large molecules are those? Well you have red blood cells, protein, and lipids. So these are not supposed to be in your urine. So if they are in your urine, um, if they show up, like for example, if you have blood in your urine, red blood cells, or if you have protein in your urine, um, or, or lipids in your urine, then that means there's a problem at this level here. Because uh, large molecules um, normally don't uh, filter through into the nephron. They're too big. Now there's two types of uh, glomerular diseases. That, well, there's many types, but there's two main categories. The first is called nephritic, with an I, and the second one is nephrotic, with an O. They, they sound similar and spelled almost the same, but there's one letter difference, and that makes all the difference. So let's start with nephritic. Nephritic re refers to that there's inflammation here, so that's nephritic. And uh, that uh, glomerular inflammation can lead to uh, uh, red blood cells and protein uh, passing through um, and getting into the urine. The next type is nephrotic. Now nephrotic is basically a situation where you have no real inflammation but you have abnormal permeability of this glomerular membrane. So let me write that down, abnormal permeability. And what that, uh, what that essentially means is that um, molecules that are not supposed to pass through are passing through, abnormal permeability. Uh, there's no um, uh, inflammation per se, but there's an abnormal filtration going on at this uh, at this level of the nephron. So those are the key uh, differences between nephritic and nephrotic. And in this uh, video, we're talking about RPGN, which is a type of nephritic disease. Nephritic with an I. Okay, so since it is a nephritic uh, disease, we essentially have an inflammation component glomerular inflammation going on so what are the some of the symptoms well basically um, some very non-specific symptoms uh, for example we mentioned earlier that you'll have blood in the urine so you have hematuria um, because you have um, kidney uh, damage you know this disease is affecting the kidney anytime you have kidney damage in the body you're going to have symptoms like fatigue uh, nausea vomiting those are very nonspecific symptoms uh, that are associated with kidney disease uh, also you can have fever because one of the reasons you get RPGN is because of an infection we'll talk a little bit about that later on when I present a clinical vignette. So that's why you get the fever.
So those are some of the basic symptoms. Um, they're not very specific, but as we go along uh, in terms of uh, this disease and, and once we get to the diagnosis it becomes much more clearer. So now we have diagnosis. Well anytime you have hematuria you want to test the urine and when you test the urine you're gonna see in the urine red blood cells and in particular you're gonna see red blood cell casts. Casts are cylindrical uh, molecules that are seen in the urine and an RBC cast is essentially a cast with an RBCs inside, or fragments of RBCs. Um, BU and creatinine are very standard kidney tests. I mean, th those are done all the time. And the creatinine level will be high. Uh, because BU and creatinine will both be high. Uh, because you're in uh, a state of uh, renal disease. The next thing is, one of the reasons this can happen is because it can occur as a result of a autoimmune attack on the glomerulus so you can test for those you can do blood tests and there's several uh, there's quite a few actually um, there's anti-GBM antibodies there's anti-streptolysin O antibody anti-DNA antibodies so quite a few but I just wanted to mention that and then the final, the most specific test to diagnose this is the renal biopsy. And what the renal biopsy will show is that it will show essentially the, the um, histologic evidence of damage to the glomerulus of uh, RPGN. A very, that's a very specific test. So now you've diagnosed it, so how do you treat well, inflammation is the hallmark, glomerular inflammation is really the hallmark of this disease. So that is treated with uh, corticosteroids. And if, in particular, if it's adults, it's usually high dose because adults tend to have a worse outcome. Another drug that's used is cyclophosphamide. And then another method of treating this is plasma exchange. What plasma exchange means is essentially you're replacing the patient's uh, plasma with uh, with new plasma, and uh, what that is believed to be effective because it removes these uh, those antibodies from the person's bloodstream and replaces uh, the blood that contains the antibodies with blood that doesn't contain the antibodies. And if you recall, those antibodies are attacking that glomerulus um, so that's why this is highly effective just to recap RPGN rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis um, is basically a nephritic syndrome it's basically uh, characterized by glomerular inflammation and that can lead to symptoms such as hematuria blood in the urine, fatigue, nausea and vomiting, fever, fever because RPGN can sometimes be caused by an infection. Diagnosis, well like any uh, kidney disorder you do the BU and creatinine that will be high. You check the urine for red blood cells and red blood cell casts, it's very important. You. Uh, do blood tests that can detect those antibodies that are actually um, causing the glomerular damage and then the most specific test is of course the biopsy. The um, antibodies uh, directed against the glomerular glomerulus uh, can result in the inflammation so that's why you test for those. And then the treatment you've got steroids most of most effective cyclophosphamide and plasma exchange and uh, that's the very basic summary so now I have a clinical vignette here I'll present that to you 
40-year-old man is admitted to the hospital for acute deterioration in renal function. He was seen at your office two days prior for some mild upper respiratory complaints, including a sore throat, fe cough, and fever. So it sounds like he had an infection. He was prescribed cephalexin antibiotic, sent home. Today his lab data turned, returned and showed blood urea nitrogen level of 67 and creatinine of 2.1. You call him and told him to meet you at the hospital for further evaluation. On admission, his BUN is now 109 and creatinine has jumped up to 4.2, so he's obviously in some sort of renal failure. Appropriate tests are ordered. EKG shows QRS complex widening and tall peak T waves. His temperature is 101. Erythematous oropharynx. Some mild tonsillar exudate. Lungs are clear. Observe that he has urinated only 5 to 10 cc's in the past two hours. So he's got some oliguria. Urine analysis shows red blood cell casts and dysmorphic red blood cells. The most important next step is two. So there's no doubt that he's got glomerulonephritis, which was caused by an infection, presenting with renal failure and some symptoms, fever, um, and um, some very, very specific uh, test results. So what do you do to treat this? Well, choice C and D are talking about giving him antibiotics. Well, he's way beyond this. He's not just in an upper respiratory infection state. He's now into renal failure. So those are gone. So now you're left with cyclophosphamide and prednisone. Um, cyclophosphamide actually is reserved for more dramatic um, immune suppression in patients with more severe disease. Um, and it's not really... Uh, the best uh, to use initially. The most appropriate next step is to use steroids. Now because he's an adult, um, diseases are, the outcome actually of RPGN in adults is much worse. So early initiation of high dose steroids is uh, associated with the best outcome. So that would be choice A.